This is 2013, FRQ number four. The figure above shows the graph of F prime, the derivative of a twice differentiable function F on the closed interval from zero to eight. The graph of F prime has horizontal tangent lines at X equals one, X equals three, X equals five. The areas of the regions between the graph of F prime and the X axis are labeled in the figure. The function F is defined for all real numbers and satisfies that F of eight is equal to four. Letter A, find all values of X on the open interval from zero to eight for which the function has a local minimum. Justify your answer. Let's make a sign chart for our derivative back to our function. So let's label all the zeros of the derivative on our chart. We have one and four and six, and then it ends over here at eight. My derivative is positive, and then it remains positive, then it goes negative, then positive. So my function f is increasing and then still increasing, so that's a little terrace point there, or flat spot, decreasing and then increasing. We are asked to find where we have a local minimum. So a local minimum would be where my function goes from decreasing to increasing, which would mean that my derivative goes from negative to positive. So we have a local minimum at x equals six. Now, because, first of all, just writing that chart, even if it's labeled beautifully, is no longer enough to justify. You must justify based on the given graph. The given graph is f prime, not f. So you have to say that you have a local minimum at x equals six because f prime goes from negative, I usually circle mine, negative to positive. All right, so that is part A and for scoring on part A, it is worth one point if you give your answer with justification. You get nothing if you just say it's at x equals six and you don't justify it. Part B, determine the absolute minimum value of f on the closed interval from zero to eight and justify your answer. Okay, I think if I understand correctly, it used to be okay for you to check the endpoints and any local minimum along the way which honestly still just seems to make a lot of sense to me. But now, apparently, you have got to list out that you are considering all of the zeros of the derivative. So I think maybe the best thing we could do here for this part B is just make ourselves a little chart and think about what we're doing. We want to go uh, when from, let's see, x, and then what is my function value? So the endpoints would be zero and eight. So we're gonna start at zero. My first zero happens at one. My next one happens at four. My next one happens at six. And the last one happens at eight. So then let's talk about how to get from this picture to actual numeric values. The only function value that I'm given is f of eight. So I can write this sentence, f of x is equal to my starting place, was, which has to be at, at eight, because that's the only place I know. So that function value is four. So it's four plus, then integrate the rate from that x value to wherever you're choosing for your x 
of the derivative. Now, if I'm if I'm putting x up here, I really technically should use a different letter here, like f of t dt. You could keep this part as the x if you wanted to, and then call this guy the t, but they, they shouldn't be the same. All right, now let's think about what we want to do. So if I, first of all, I know that f of 8 is 4, right? So let's do that. So if I start here, and then I move this way, then I know that I was at 8, and if I add to that, all right, I'm going backwards, so that's my that's negative, but it's above the x-axis. So 8 plus negative 7. So that gives me Oh, I wrote the wrong thing. Sorry. Like that is so not right. My my y value, sorry about that. My function value is not 8. My function value is 4. So 4 plus negative 7. So how about negative 3 right there? So let's just keep going. So we're at negative 3. And then we're going backwards. And it's below. So plus 3, right? Minus a minus. So then we should be at 0. Right? So at this point, we're at 0. And then we're going to go backwards. So if I go 0 plus negative direction, but above the x, so plus negative 6. So we're at negative 6. So then finally, if we are at negative 6 here and we go backwards this way, so negative 6 plus negative 2, right? We're going backwards, but it's above the x. So negative 8. Now I forgot what we were looking for. Determine the absolute minimum and justify your answer. So the absolute minimum, this is for letter B, is negative 8, I always say where, at x equals 0, whether you're asked that or not. And your, for a problem like this, your justification can be your consideration of all of the zeros. So the combination of writing out this equation and showing that you have considered all of the zeros of the derivative would be your justification. This is a three point problem. So the one point is that you considered x equals zero and x equals six. Honestly, that may have tweaked a little bit since then, but a point for that consideration so that you considered zero and six, so that gets you a point. The answer is a point, and then your justification is sort of the combination of this and that you considered the other possible places. All right, now my work is just a mess, isn't it? Let's look at C. On what open intervals contained from zero with x between zero and eight is the graph of f both concave down and increasing? I know where f is increasing from the table that I made earlier. So let's go right here and make another one. From f prime back to f. But now we don't want our zeros. We want our local maxes and mins, right? The stationary points of your derivative. 
So one, three, five. And it ends at eight. Now we want to talk about decreasing and increasing places on our derivative. So our derivative is decreasing, increasing, decreasing, and increasing, which means the graph of F is concave down, concave up, concave down, concave up. Let's see, we're looking where we're concave down and increasing. Well, the only places we're concave down are these two spots. So now check whether you're increasing. I am increasing from zero to one, so that's one answer. If you're talking about where something's concave up or down, then you need to use parentheses. So zero to one, Let's see, how about from three to five? Now, three to four, you're increasing, but then at four, you switch to decreasing. So to be increasing and concave down, you can grab that little interval from three to four. And we can say that this is true because F prime is decreasing and positive. Points, this is worth two points. One point is for the answer. You've got to have both of those intervals. And then one point is for your explanation. You could kind of separate that out if you wanted to and say F is concave down where F prime is decreasing, F is increasing where F prime is positive, or you can just put it all together like that. And we've got one more part to do. Letter D. The function G is defined by g of x equals f of x quantity cubed. And then we know that f of three is negative five halves. We're supposed to find the slope of the line tangent to the graph of g at x equals three. All right, if I'm looking for the slope of the line tangent to the graph of g, then that means I need G prime. Let's see, let me jot it down here. So G of X is F of X quantity cubed. So G prime of X, this is a chain rule. The outer function is the cubing function. So three times F of X quantity squared times the derivative of the inside function. So that's times F prime of X. That's my G prime, but I want to know when X is three. So G prime of three is equal to three times F of three quantity squared times F prime of three. Okay, over here we're told F of three is negative five halves. So we have three times negative five halves squared times F prime of three. Go back to your graph. This is F prime. F prime of three. F prime of three is four. Now on the AP exam, this is nothing but arithmetic left. So you should stop here. So if you stop here, you will get full credit. This is worth three points, one point, or sorry, two points, 
are for you finding g prime and then one point is that you found the answer. Now, if you check the scoring guide, then yes, this will say that the final answer is 75. And I know that we know how to simplify things, but don't simplify once you get down to arithmetic unless you need it for some other part of a problem later.